for now so I can move this and we have gotten the effect for the first one we'll be looking at the copy rotation constraint this constraint enables you to apply cool effect like rotating a single finger and then making the rest of the finger pull along so let's try to apply it to this finger so we'll select the bone we want to apply this effect and in the constraint tab we want to select copy rotation then for the target we'll set it to amateur then for the bone we'll try to select this bone a quicker way to achieve this is to just select the influencer bone then select the bone you want to apply this effect and press ctrl shift c and under transformation you want to copy rotation next you want to offset so this offset enables you to be able to rotate the bone after applying this effect then for the space you want to set it to local space so this is only applicable when you're using amateurs so once you rotate this bone then you have the effect working so let's apply it to the last one we select this bone and shift select this bone press ctrl shift c copy rotation offset local space so with that we can just rotate this board and the rest follows the law so let's try to apply this to just object we select this object we want this object to follow the rotation of this object so to achieve this we go to the constraint tab and add a copy rotation then for the target we just use the eyedropper tool to select this object and with that we're good we don't need to select choose the local space when using the object we have to leave it in the world space so now we can rotate this object and we are all good but when, when we try to rotate this it's not moving that's because we need to set offset and that's just basically that for the next constraint it's called squash and stretch so this cool constraint allows you to squash and stretch your object so you can create cool effects that look like this so how to achieve this is let's go into our constraint tab you can add it manually here or we can just do as we did earlier select this bone shift select this one press ctrl shift c and stretch to um this by default it works so you can just move this along so you also have some parameters to modify some of the effect so you can reduce or restrict the minimum volume of the, of the squash or stretch and also the maximum so now you get a bit restrictive movement so that's that for the third constraint it will be the follow path constraint so we'll be using Susan for this example and also we'll be needing a Bezier curve next we select Susan go into the constraint tab under relationship we want to select follow path constraint so we need a target and that target has to be a curve so we're we'll selecting the busy curve we created Suzanne immediately snaps to the edge of the curve and we can change this by going into the edit mode of the curve we'll select the switch direction so we can either switch any direction we want Suzanne to be or we can actually manually place it if we try to play the animation nothing happens that's because we need to select or click on this animate part and once you do that Susan moves along the curve to have control over this animation you select the curve and go into the path animation and you can either modify the frame to make it longer or faster next you can also make Susan follow the orientation of the curve by selecting follow curve so this enables Susan to this enables Susan's orientation to be formed by the orientation of the curve and right now it's facing the wrong way and we can manually just go in and rotate Susan the right way and it moves appropriately so let's try to make it look cool we we'll subdivide this and just move it something like that and Susan will automatically follow that So for the last two constraints I'll be showing you guys today, 
we'll be using them to create this cool effect. So the first one is the floor constraint. So to apply the floor constraint, you select the influencer bone, shift select the bone you want to apply this effect and press Ctrl Shift C, floor constraint. And automatically everything looks good. And if we move this board, you see that it's already moving the bone accordingly. So we have used the floor constraint as a trigger to enable this effect we're trying to go for work perfectly. So now it's, try, it's now to add the final part of this, which is the transformation constraint. So we'll be selecting this bone and shift select the ball bone and press Ctrl Shift C and we'll set it to transformation. So transformation constraint may look a bit intimidating, but it's quite easy to understand with much practice. I will not be covering in depth of it. I may put out a separate video explaining this in detail. But for today, we want, um, I will just brush through it. So you have the source and you have the destination. So the source is basically the motion of the influencer object and the destination is the effect which you want from the object being affected. So for the source, I want when I move it on the Y axis, it up negative positive 0.2. 5 meter then I want 0 0.05 0 0.05 meters then I want it to move up in the positive y axis about 5 meters so let's set it up I'll set this to 5 and then I want to set this to local space and let's play so it's working well but I need it's not um it, the rest place is not the position which i want so i can just set the minimum to negative five and that should fix that 